Okay. Our next interview is with Bibi Mohammed from the uh, Imperial Fine Books in New York City. And we're here at the Boston International Book Fair, November 15th, 2014. Bibi, like I ask everybody else, tell us something about your family background, where you were born and brought up, what your parents did, do you have siblings, you have children, blah, blah, blah. A little, just okay. a little bio. Yeah, sure. Uh, in 1972, uh, of November 12th, I came here with my parents and my other siblings to America. It was one of the most exciting day of my life, besides uh, the, the, the second best, or the, I think the best was giving birth to my two children, girls. Uh, my parents are Guyanese. We were born in British Guyana, ruled by the British. Um, and our great-great-grandparents are from India, uh, mm. some parts of India, either Calcutta, Bihar. I have three brothers and three sisters. Wow. Um, I am married. My husband is Egyptian. Uh, he deals in Chinese ceramics <laughs> and works of art. Uh, he worked at Christie's auction for many years. And I have two beautiful daughters. One is in FIT, studying fashion. And my youngest is in the Bergenfield High School, and she's into uh, music. She's on the band, on percussion. Oh, uh, she loves singing, playing the guitar, you name it, she loves it. Um, I came here, of course, when I was 15 years of age, oh, wow. and uh, went to high school, and graduated, and then started working for the most famous book dealer in the world, I would say, was J.N. Bartfield. That's right. Um, and they were one of the best. Uh, it was a great education for me. Uh, they were wonderful. And I worked with them for 13 years. And after a while, not getting older, not finding someone to settle down, like Indian family, my parents are after you to get married. So <laughs> I, I kind of uh, left there and went on my own. and. In 1989, I opened my bookshop at 790 Madison Avenue, and last month made me 25 years in that location. That's great. Do you don't you rent or do you? Um, oh no, I rent, but I should have bought. That's what after, everybody says. After the rent and real estate taxes. Uh, between myself and my husband, I think we could have bought a beautiful building in Manhattan <laughs> and be okay. Be okay. Yes. But, you know, what, what are you going to do? You have to what, take what, what it is. Was it the fact that you worked at Barfields that got you motivated to books? Um, yes, it, it was. Um, Michael, I have to say it was destiny. Really? Because, I, of course, I worked at Barfield, but I was not in the sales. I oh. was their secretary, oh. and at the last two years when Jack uh, passed away, then I got into working, selling with dealers, uh, collectors and buyers. They were, you know, they said to come into the front office and work. Um, I was, I, and you know, Bartfield is a family-owned business, yeah. so there was no way to move up, right. you know, to own something or get in a higher position. And I was getting older, I wanted to do something different. So I quit, and I wanted to honestly work for like an auction house or an art gallery that I could travel, do something different. But when I started doing interviews with different companies, it, didn't, it did not work out. <laughs> I was like going backwards, you know, yeah. what I was making 13 years ago is was starting back making that kind of money yeah. or less. And I said, you know what, forget it. And I just um, started to go to um, house sales. You know, I, my oldest brother would wake up with me and go to Connecticut, and we would go buy, looking for books. You know, I, I, and at that time, I was living at, in the Bronx. So that's where all my, technically where my business started. In the Bronx. In the Bronx at my parents' basement. <laughs> um, it's a great story. You know, I always wanted to write a book. And so I started going to house sales and, um, you know, with a little bit of finance that I saved yeah. because my parents are not wealthy by no means. I, wasn't, I didn't inherit this business. I don't have a famous father or mother. <laughs> um, so I worked from scratch to where I am, and I'm very proud of that. Um, 
And so I used to go to these sales and you know start buying books and building a collection. Uh, one day I was going to um, Waverly Auctions yeah, on the know. Amtrak train, and next to me was a gentleman sitting next to me, and he saw me looking at the catalog, and he's like, oh, uh, are you a book dealer, or are you a collector? I said, well, technically I'm both right now, but I'm looking to become a book dealer. Uh, and he's like, oh, maybe I will use your service. I could, you know, I'm, I'm looking for some books in about a month or so. Do you have a business card? Of course I didn't. No. I mean, I just started. <laughs> So I said, no, I don't, but I could give you my parents' <laughs> <laughs> phone number and my name. And he took it, and we chatted a while and everything, and I went, I bought my books, whatever I can. And a uh, funny story is that a month later, the gentleman did call. It was a Saturday, I remember specifically. And uh, he said, oh, uh, this is Mr. Belander. He's a famous uh, designer. Huh. And I didn't know that. I didn't know who he was. I, so I said, oh, yes, yes, I remember. He's like, oh, I would love to come and see what you have at home. I have a client who I need to do a library. I said, of course, but of course, you know, I'm living in the Bronx. Yeah. So, so I had <laughs> to go and pick him up in, in Manhattan, <laughs> drove there, brought him home, took him in the basement, show him everything. <laughs> he says, um, okay, can you ship all these to I Sun Valley, Idaho? I said, of course. <laughs> I said, yeah, great. <laughs> great. Yeah, great, my first sale, <laughs> you know, fantastic, a great feeling. And it turned out to be a, a very famous fa family, it's the Bromfman family. Oh, yeah, the, the, yeah, like that, a, the Seagrams, yeah. yes, the, so it, he was doing one of their, like, vacation home in yeah. Sun Valley, uh, Sun Valley, Idaho. And, it, you know, that's how my, my, progress. It was like meeting the right people and making the right contacts and, uh, you know, doing little book fairs. Uh, I remember my first book fair was in Houston, Texas. Really? Yes. And I had a table like this. I s put my leather bound books here. And i never forget this. David Bauman <laughs> came to that fair <laughs> and he bought everything. <laughs> so, and, and he's like, do you have a shop? And I said, no. And clients would ask, do you have a shop? I said, no, you know, I'm working from home. And, uh, but it was funny. I, and I remember telling David, I said, gee, you should come and open a shop in Manhattan because I know how famous they are. I said, uh, because Bartfield, you know, they were about to close to yeah. and, and getting, because Jack died, they weren't doing so much into books. They're more into the uh, Western art. Yeah. But uh, and then I finally came home one day and told my parents, I said, you know, I think I need a little s space, a gallery to, to have a, because I'm meeting people, I have nowhere to yeah. bring them and show them what I have. And my parents were like very disturbed because yeah. they're like, are you sure you know what you're doing? You know, it's expensive, we, we don't have money, we don't have money t to help you. I said, it's okay, mom, I have to try, I have yeah. to try. Yeah. And I remember going on Madison Avenue, seeing the same office 25 years ago, I went there myself, by myself, I liked the space. Then I went to a bit an agent, and they took me to the same space. Huh. And I said, maybe this is destiny. Yeah. And I did sign the lease, you know, I mean, at that, in 9, 25 years ago, the rent was like $1,500. Now that is like triple. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, so, but you know, that's where it's all started, and it's, it's like I said, it's my destiny. Uh, I work very hard. It's a, I believe there's someone above me taking care of me very much, sending me a lot of good things and doing a lot of, a lot of good. But I do work hard. Well, yeah, I to. travel a lot. I, I just don't do book fairs. I also do a, many fine antique shows. Yeah, yeah. Um, and throughout the country. So it's, you know, and after 2008, I mean, it was great being in the gallery. But after the economy and, yeah. and everything, everything changed. Yeah. So you had to go outside and start looking for clientele. Yeah. Because the area that I specialize in, which are beautiful leather bound sets and fine bindings and children books, illustrated books, that area is, th th there's not that many collectors, you know, yeah. private collectors for that particular area. You have to deal with decorators. And yeah. because of the real estate market, that also 
the designers, you know, we, we used to deal with designers, we don't even see them now. Yeah. So you have to, for me, I have to go out and find clients. And, and it's, been, it's been good, you know, I thank God. It's been, they have me keep me going, you know, for the you, shows and the- Do you advertise in, in newspapers or magazines? Um, or? I used to advertise a lot. I mean, New York Times, yeah. Wall Street Journal, Town and Country, Architectural Digest, uh, New York Magazine. Uh, I mean, you name it, I advertise a lot. I mean, I, years ago, it did work. Is it work? I mean, right now, I am advertising in a couple of things. Is it working now? I honestly don't think so. Mm. I really don't think so. The walking business, like, for example, we would be so busy. I remember one summer, the gallery was so busy in New York. And now, I mean, it, you don't get one soul walking in on a Saturday. We are open on Saturdays now. And, no, and, and, no, nobody comes no, in. No, no, hardly anyone comes in you know, during the week or on the weekend. Um, sometimes you get lucky, you get that one yeah, or two yeah. person. And it's, it's like affairs, it's, yeah. it's like, doing fairs also. I mean, we have a beautiful fair in Boston. It's great merchandise, wonderful dealers, and we're all not going to be going home happy. Yeah, you know, some of us will make a lot of money, some of us will make okay, and some of us will go home with zero. Yeah. You know, I just finished a show in Dallas, an antique show, and it was um, very stressful, and there's lots of money in Dallas. Yes. Lots of good collectors too for rare books. They are um, because I know that working from Bartfield. Yeah. I know I know the market is very good there. But yet, a lot of dealers. It's so sad because doing an antique show is much more in cost oh, yeah. than a, than a book fair. Yes. And my heart goes out to dealers. You know, you sit there, you wait, you you know from yeah. e from eleven to seven for seven days, six days, God. and go home empty-handed. It's, it's, it's a sad and stressful thing, you know. But it happens. I, but it happens. It happens. That's life. You know, you don't, not everybody wants books. Not everybody wants paintings. Not everybody wants, well, yeah, all the women wants jewelry. Yeah. You know, yeah. the jewelry does well. It doesn't matter where yeah. you go. But, um, well, let me know what else you want to know. No, I'll, I'll ask you. I'll ask the questions. Okay. You give me the answers. Okay. Um, I was going to ask you about, is there anything um, cyclical about you, uh, your business? Do you have, like, a lot of people come in before Christmas and stuff? Ah, uh, yes. Yes. For me, uh, my hopefully, it, my busy season is coming up, yeah. uh, which would be starting next week. After starting next week? Like, yeah, after Thanksgiving. Or even um, you know that week of Thanksgiving, I do have some clients come in, or we put out a catalog, we issue a catalog at least once or twice a year, and uh, we do get calls and our loyal clients, you yeah. know, looking for gifts and uh, buying things either for their friends or family. So it is a, a busy, hopefully a busy time for me for the before the year is over, um, and and. Usually, the summer is very quiet in New York. Yeah, People yeah. go away. I mean, in say January, it could still be okay because there are a lot of antique shows in New York, the winter antique shows. There's so many beautiful shows going on in New York, so you have a lot of tourists coming into the yeah. city. But um, I, we do a lot with the catalog and, and, and shows and book fairs. Would you say that the majority of your business is done through shows? Yes. What percentage would you say? Um, I would say about 90%. Really? Yes. So not much from the shop? No. Do you keep the shop just because you want to have a presence? I keep the shop because I want to have a presence. It's a great location. Yeah. Um, I'm, I have a very spoiled sister who works with me. <laughs> she yeah. doesn't want to leave 790 Madison. She loves looking on the <laughs> Madison <laughs> Avenue <laughs> and, see, and see the doormen in all the shops watching the, the streets. Um, no, it's, a good, it's good to have a presence, you know, because you, I do deal with very important clients mm. and and they want to be taken care of and they right. want it to feel special and they want to you know to come into your shop and feel at home 
So I do, I do want to still carry that service. It's, you know, I know the shows do more of a business, but it's important to have a location. How many shows a year do you think you do? Uh, between book fairs and antique shows, at least 15. 15 shows mm -hmm. a year. So it's more than once a month. Right? Oh, yes, yes. How I mean, I have a show coming up in December, first week in December in Greenwich, Connecticut. Well, that's not yeah, too far. It's not far away. And then I did the one in Dallas. And then next week we have a show in Houston, yeah. an antique show in Houston. So, and, and then, like, for example, in January, I have a show. February, I have a show in Florida. I'm, not, I'm sorry, I'm not going to California. It's too far, too <laughs> far for me. <laughs> um, and I love Palm Beach because the weather is nicer. Oh. Uh, and, and it's a nice area, yes. too. A lot of wealthy uh, yes, people in Palm yes. Beach. Yes, yes. Palm Beach, you know, you have people coming from everywhere who have a second home and who is there just to get away from the winter. And then March, no shows. So that's nice, you know. It gives, it gives me a break. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I wish I had more time. I mean, I, I think I've done a great job with my kids. They, they love me tremendously. And if, but at the same time, I wish I had more time to be yeah. with my kids. And so I'm trying, as I'm getting in age, uh, I'm trying uh, yeah. to. I, I, You're yeah. the same age you were. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to spend more time. Like my oldest daughter is here this weekend with me. She, How old is she? She's 19. She goes to FIT. She's studying fashion, fashion design. design. Yes. So she came to spend a few days with me. So that's nice. I wish my my youngest would be here, but she has a football game with the high school this weekend, and she has to be in the band because they play. Oh for, yeah, for absolutely. Every, yeah. So, That's but a big deal, Yeah, too. it is, very much. And she does not want to miss a day of no. school or miss a day of something. She's so professional. She's, She's very involved. She gets, a, she gets a B, she cries. I mean, <laughs> I, mean, it, I yeah. have a grandkid like that. Yeah, and I'm like, you know, Nuri, it's okay. I, I used to get C and Ds. <laughs> you know? And look where I am. <laughs> and I did not go to college. You know, you never I said I college. never went to college. I said I never went to college. You went so right from high school to? You know, it's funny how I got my job. Um, George Bartfield, the brother, uh, called uh, my school, my high school, the dean, Washington Irving High School. And I was top in my class for secretarial and uh, he was looking for a secretary. So he called my dean and said, uh, yeah. which, which was, uh, like I said, that's destiny. all this destiny. Mm, destiny. And she called me in one day and she's like, Bibi, <clears throat> would you like to work? I said, of course, you know, I could make a little money for myself. Sure. I can have, you know, buy a pair of shoes yeah. or a <laughs> nice little dress or something. Mm -hmm. I said, of course, I wouldn't mind. And um, I was, had all my credits that I didn't have to wait for June to graduate. I could graduate earlier, which I did. So I didn't even go to my prom because I started working. <laughs> um, so I went, so she said, would you like to go for the interview? I said, of course. So she said, um, you know, you can go the way you are. I said, no. I said, I have to dress like a secretary, a nice skirt, nice top. She said, no, the gentleman on the phone said you could come dress <laughs> the way you want. <laughs> Great sounding job. <laughs> yes, yeah. So I did go. It was a Saturday, and I went, and George was there, and and he interviewed me, and Jack was away out of town, and uh, I remember him dictating because I took shorthand. I was very good in shorthand, and uh, dictated a letter, and I <laughs> I remember I always tell people this story. He he dictated a letter to Tom Jones, so I remember Tom Jones as a singer. Yeah. So. So he did, dictated a letter, I took it, I typed it, and, and then he goes, um, oh, do you have a brother or somebody who could do packing? So I have a younger brother. So I said, oh, of course, I have a brother. He, would, he wouldn't mind, he would work. So he got the job before I did. Really? Yeah, he got the job packing books, and then I, wouldn't hear, I didn't hear back from George. So I said, oh, what's going on? So I called him, I said, do I have the job or not? He goes, oh, yes, yes, sorry, we were going to call you. <laughs> but you could start working, you know, and that's how it all started, you wow. know, with, with working with Bartfield. Great experience, wonderful people, have, have the best thing to say about them, best. Yeah. Well, those three martini lunches did me in. <laughs> yes, yeah, Jack was fabulous. He would go on trips and, and call me and says, uh, what would you like? I'm in Paris. 
And I yeah. said, oh, Mr. Bartfield, you could bring me a bottle of perfume yeah. or a scarf <laughs> or something. Yeah. And he would say, don't tell my brother. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but he loves his traveling. He loved good food, good wine. You know, yeah. he was he, a great he, person. He was. He yeah. was. He was a really, yeah. really good guy. Yeah, a well, great person. Great person. So it's so nice to have that as a provenance. Oh you know? yeah, it's yeah. A great provenance. That opens up me. doors. Yes, yes. It really yeah. does. Yeah. When you've worked for somebody like oh, that. Oh yes, it yes. It really does. Yes. Um, you do you have any kind of an internet presence? Um, Michael, I do have a wonderful website. Um, we do put books on Abe, um, and we put like on some antique sites like First Dibs. But we do not, and I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but I don't get inquiries like saying someone saw a set of books or a single book, or we don't get calls. Or emails saying, really? "Oh, yeah, yeah." Do you have pictures of your and stuff. We have pictures, full descriptions, yeah. and it, I don't know. I said um, maybe I need to speak to an expert and see where we're going wrong, you know. But I don't know how many dealers do a lot on the internet. Honestly, I don't know. But I don't do that much. Well, your your type of material is best seen face to face. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I might. I. I. As a dealer, very skeptical to buy leather bound books online. Oh yeah. Uh, you uh, don't know very, what they're Yeah. Like. Because you can see it pretty, and then when you get it, it's something else. Yeah. So I. I'm very skeptical. So I can imagine it's also a price point. I mean, someone spending five thousand dollars. I don't know if they would buy it online just like that. You know. Uh, uh, it uh, would uh, depend on what it was. Oh yeah. So. You know, uh, uh, if there's. If it's a manuscript, or yes, it's uh, yes, one thing. yes. But I, I know if I were buying bindings, I, I would want to, I would want to physically hold. Them, uh, yes, yes. Make sure that the Thank covers God. weren't loose. And yeah, and and uh, you brought up a good subject because people are like saying, oh, uh, are, because when they look at my books, they think it's all new. You know, they they like, oh, I said no, these are old fine, rare books just to emphasize a lot on condition. I learned that from Bartfield. Absolutely. Uh, condition, condition, and condition, condition. And I said, um, you know, and if you look at this, uh, they would think, oh, it's by uh, books by the yard or, you know, I said, and it's an insult. I, yeah. said, I, I said, if you look at my titles, I don't think this, these books are by the foot or by the yard. I said, you like have Poe, you have Whitman, you have Mark Twain, you have Thoreau manuscript. These are not by the right. yard or by the foot. Um, but I think, you know, uh, and they're like saying, oh, but people read the, the candles and all these things. Mm -hmm. I said, well, thank God we still have a lot of wonderful clients who want to touch, feel, yeah, right. smell, and look at books in the, in the rare books. And I, I said, that's, I think we will exist. Candles and all these things will go yeah. out of fashion, right. but I we agree. will we will stay here for the till the end of Earth. Yeah. I feel that as long as you can pay the rent. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, I, I you know I mean imagine we have books published in fourteen hundred and fifty. It it survived, That's you know. Right. And I said, it's a miracle. In, yeah, it's a miracle. But also also these our books will become more valuable because the print there are no more printing being done. You know, the print is out of style. So, yeah, every, you know, it's, so it's, it's crazy. Yeah, isn't it's it? a crazy world. Crazy world. Um, if if somebody came to you and said, "Baby, I need some advice. I'm thinking about going into the book business," what would you say to them? I would encourage them, because I was always encouraged. Um, you always have to try. If you don't try, you never you'll know. never know. That's, you'll never so know. So whether try. you and as long as you love what you're doing, you will be a success. That and it, you know, experience is very good. Yeah. You know, experience is very good. So I would encourage someone and um, tell them, well, make sure you love what you're going to do, and don't get disappointed if it doesn't work out. Move on, pick yourself up and move on. Because I never knew that. I would be in the book business as long as I am right now. 
but no. you know, you never know. You never know. You never know is never, right. Yeah. And guess what? Yes. We're at the end of our 30 minutes, and it flew right by, and, <laughs> you, and you had a good time, didn't you? <laughs> yes. That's great. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Thank you.